Hello, everyone. Welcome to round number two of Group A. In our number seven newcomers tournament, this time we've got K-E-I-Y-C, which I have no idea how to pronounce. So we're just going with that. Z Ratchet, a.k.a. Bracket, Branis, and Dot Dot, who I might just call Paul because that's the other name that I know him by. Bill Thanik still here with me doing the broadcasting. We got a and different Polina map. did not give us a nice map. No, this one's this one's mean. Mm. Lots of high prices, though. It there is very this fast. one scavenger spot right here that I'm looking at that would be decent. You found close to the colony. You got some aluminum over there. And then water's a little bit of an issue, but it isn't that far of a shipping distance. I was also expansive is always a decent option when you have to ship long distances. So scientist. I don't mind this scientist, actually. This is nice. Oh, that's it's a bit unfortunate though. Okay, but he's gonna he's gonna get the full line down at least. The the warehouse expanded onto the medium tile right as he was like trying to take it. I think it was a bit funny. So wh where was our last player found? Robot it? down see. here in the uh, bottom corner. The problem with this found is water is so far away. Now yeah, robot, water is very far away. But also, yeah. silicon's really far away too, so that's two markets that are going to be really hard for Z Ratchet to get in. Yeah, there are core samples scattered about. I'm trying to see. I see rocky terrain near him. Uh, there is, I think, now that's some volcanic terrain. So yeah, nothing really great to core sample out any of looking yeah, for. There is a riverbed just a little to the north uh, so, so we do have if yeah. he spots all that and has a core sample maybe. and by the way the shortcut for that is uh shift z so you can see the percentage for core sampling yeah if you want to go ahead and do that i'll be honest i have a little bit easier time just looking for the terrain types these days <laughs> but, uh, hey if you want the actual percentages go for it i never bothered to memorize what terrain type was what well it was really easy to remember riverbed equals one yes well, you just, then you have to remember what the texture of the riverbed is. Ah, all our players are on HQ2, all with about the same amount of cash. There are no terrible founds this time, so that's always encouraging. Yeah, I'm actually really surprised by that. Is the, the first thing that surprised me this game is I didn't hate any of the four founds that we had. All our players did a good job of kind of picking apart this map and seeing something that was at least viable, even if it's not perfect. Right, and that's that's something that's not always easy to do on a map of this nature. And it's a good thing we have core samples down here and here this aluminum, <laughs> just in case. Although a little bit unfortunate for Varanis, the, the fact that he is going to be stuck on that one low. But maybe that's enough. Everybody has gotten into aluminum very quickly this game because they were all concerned about it as a potentially limited market because the, the rest of the aluminum was all in that northeast corner. And because everybody has gotten into it, now it's unlikely to actually be an issue because there should be a large amount of aluminum production in this game. Right. Now, the one problem we're going to have is Ratchet here is shipping that carbon quite a decent distance, just one tile, but power is already 133 and rising on HQ2. It is a American colony, so that has a tendency to spawn Ooh. office modules. So that means power is going to be a thing this game. And uh, game and he's just going to ship everything, all of it, water, silicon. Paul is carbon. already on the game, going into one wind turbine on HQ two. It's all right as long as they can get to the upgrade to HQ three quickly. Three K to go, but some of that's tied up in this wind turbine, which cost one point four K. So. I think the aluminum will actually get him there pretty fast, or yeah. you can just grab the extra claim right here. Yeah, so that wind turbine should be just fine. That's the only issue going into the power HQ2 is if it delays your upgrade to HQ3 too much, which is yeah. why we often tell new players don't go into a geotherm on HQ2. Well, and geos in particular are the easiest trap to fall into there, because if you're not expansive, it just shuts you down so hard. Even if you are expansive, it's a bit of a, a bit of a speed bump, but it won't completely destroy your game. I actually really like that geotherm right there. From uh, our scientific friend of K. I'm just gonna call him K from now yeah, on. Yeah, so the geo's a nice play by K, but what I'm not enjoying is the single glass kill knot by itself on top oh, no, of that's terrible. the uh, silicon and the single 
electrolysis reactor out by itself. This would have been much better to have that pair of electrolysis reactors, but like we discussed last game, adjacency bonuses plus 50% production for having two buildings of the same type next to each other to both Supply buildings at the same input. So that's three single tiles for, of output for two tiles of input. Yeah, I wouldn't have even minded out of Varanus game. I mean, glass was so expensive at the start, even without it being a glass colony. There's a fair amount of it needed. Silicon's kind of difficult. I might not have minded him taking the quarry, grabbing an extra claim off the market, and just setting up a couple of kilns right next to his base. I think that could have worked out even better than, than any of the other yes. options because it moves through upgrades quickly because you get that cash flowing fairly quickly rather than waiting for your buildings that are way out in the middle of nowhere to ship stuff to you. Now, K That's is in D debt already, which is definitely not somewhere that you want to be. Um, all of our other players that are in C debt on HQ3, so they're not doing much better. Although, uh, Paul, or Double Dot over here, has a triangle of wind turbines up, and that's going to chew through his debt very fast unless somebody uses some of these tools like power surges to take them down, which they should be thinking about doing right now. Yeah, meanwhile, Ratchet has made absolutely sure that that power price is going to hold steady for Paul. Oh, because no. so well, much shipping. shipping. So 3.2 so two power in the freighter it's alone. 10 freighters in the air. 11 freighters peaking. And no... Yeah, 10, 10 to... Oh, 12. So somewhere between 10 and 12. That's a lot. At any given moment. That's Eight. a lot, yeah. 11k for the upgrade has 19k. Once again, needs to sell down some stuff just to get that upgrade and then move into that geotherm as fast as possible and maybe a pair of wind turbines just to get out of this debt situation. D plus one debt with the new interest rate increases in the latest patch. D plus one can very quickly kill you. Oh yeah, yeah, that interest rate keeps going up 2% level up to a maximum of 40% extra debt, so 70% debt ticks if you're in that D plus 20. And well, by then you're at a dollar anyway, so it's not like it matters. I also want to point out that maybe auto-selling steel, if you're our robotic friend, is not the best idea when steel costs $12. No, no, it would be far better to either rotate out or just save up on the steel, because you'll need it later. Yeah, stockpile it so that maybe when you hit HQ3, you can go ahead and get a couple geotherms down pretty quickly, that kind of thing. That's more what you're going to be looking to do with your steel at this point. He should be able to sell down that silicon and get to this upgrade pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, also yeah, there's still, one still claim that. that he could be using for anything. Anything. Uh, going into a single greenhouse farm at at this point, that's fine. You just want to get to that upgrade to HQ3 and whatever gets you there. But you do have enough money to do it anyway, so just sell out. And just, get do there. Yeah. just do it. Just do it. Got to watch for that. Got to watch your your cash and make sure that you get into. Varanus right, going Varanus for teleportation, to teleportation, which going to solar panels and power the side. Sure. I'd actually like to see superconductor first. Superconductor is such a good tool. So hopefully they queue superconductor That's second. Fair. Paul That's fair. HQ four ahead of the expansive and the scientist as you want to be. In this map, Polina says, concerned a lot of players in D-Debt blame Polina, hashtag, so there you go. Our producer of See, the tournament explain. gives permission to blame her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame these players. They could just, they could be making some, I'm gonna blame, actually, I'm gonna blame uh, Ratchet over here for all of this because he's driven the power prices sky high on all these guys and they're having to deal with that this game. On the other hand, D plus 10 is a excellent pickup for HQ has everybody. Varanus right here should be thinking, okay, I got the solar panels up, that's going to take care of my debt. I'm going to Financial Instruments, but it should be Superconductor, but Financial Instruments be a good third pickup. <laughs> and then next, pick up this guy who's just buy, nothing just buy good. Ratchet. Sell everything and buy him now. Target <laughs> share price of less than a dollar. You can't go that low. You cannot go pick wrong by picking those up. Meanwhile, Paul is going for majority buy on Kayak, who did a risky upgrade to HQ4. Doesn't quite have enough to defend themselves, so we're going to have the first majority buy in our group. I'd still take down tournament. Ratchet, though, because you can get the you can easily get the yes. ship by those two extra planes. Boy. Well, Let somebody buy Ratchet, please. Put them out, put them out Ratchet. of their suffering. He's literally dead. A like, Varanus can't actually afford it, is the sad part right now. 
So it's oh, just they Paul. Upgraded. Ran a snatching. Yeah, Varanus upgraded. Yeah. Defeat from potential Jaws of Victory right there with not buying Rash Shift yet. Upgraded. Shift bot. Let's get it done. For now, uh, Paul right here. Okay, there they Paul's, go. Paul's basically like one Paul game won the game. Paul's been in he a great part. spot for a really long time. Like, he's making the power money on the wind turbines. He was in the life support markets before water got too ridiculously expensive. He was moving through upgrades when everybody else was being slow. And so, uh, so Paul put himself in a nice spot, and he has successfully exploited it so far this game. I don't think Varanus is really going to have a chance to keep up. I mean, just no, uh, these, these wind turbines, like I mentioned a soul ago or something like that, we're sitting here with power surges at 3k. Now it's finally Just going down, but it's too little too late there. Otis, Otis, this just We're bas we're basically done. Like we could we can commentate out the rest of this and we can keep what players are doing well and what players aren't doing well. It will take a miracle for Varanus to stay in this game though. Maybe Superconductor can do it. It's a rather miraculous patent in a lot of ways. Yeah. But once again, probably should have picked up that up first for Varanus. Could have already yeah, been making lots of power money and would have had enough money to buy out Racket. Yeah, so here's the thing about financial instrument. I kind of hate it. I kind of hate it because you pick it up because you're like, that guy's in a lot of debt. I might make some money off of him and his interest ticks. And then he just gets bought out by you or somebody else because that's the point is they have a low stock price and you just buy them and then they don't have interest ticks anymore and now financial instruments does the black squat is open for so yeah you really need to be looking at even if somebody's in a lot of debt usually there is a better way to exploit that tools like teleportation and superconductor can help out with that a lot because they keep you from getting debt and allow you to potentially make power money or fuel money which are often the sources of your opponent's large amount of debt you'll find those two tools much better for exploiting high the amounts of debt in other players ready. than financial instruments everything. Right. The, um... It's my little rant about hating that patent. I've held that in for like a year. Yeah, so it seems like financial instruments made more sense before all of these debt interest changes back in the day when uh, Game Slayer and PB Head could win in $300,000 of debt. $700,000 of debt, yeah. Well, even, even the $300,000 of debt and winning yeah, yeah, days, yeah, that's right? That's, fair. that's still pretty useful, but definitely an area where the patent could evolve with the rest of the game for sure, financial instruments. Meanwhile, Varanus, once again, doing decently well with these black market attacks, but unfortunately too little too late needed to do that when uh, Paul or Dot Dot over here was on HQ4 and everyone else was on HQ3. And then uh, Kayak... I don't know if we did comment, but Kayak learned an important the lesson, or hopefully did, about upgrading and not checking how much money your opponent has on hand. Yeah. Now, it's not intuitive, but if you mouse over the player, you can see how much cash and resources they have. Uh, you, when you're playing, you don't get this nice little number here. You gotta actually, it's semi-hidden behind the, uh, the Yui here. You have to spend some time and attention to acquire that info. You gotta pull up the tip and see, huh, my has got some money. Maybe I should think about slowing down for a moment. Yeah, it's been uh, one of those Yui things that's been debated for as long as I've been playing Offworld Trading Company, whether it should be displayed there or slightly hidden. But for the moment, it's fallen on the slightly hidden side of things, and if you don't know about it, it can hurt you. Yeah, when... Uh, so your opponent has, uh, what is it, about 60 to 80 percent of the cash plus resources needed to buy you out and they're making plenty of money, you cannot upgrade. Yeah, you least. just can't do it because maybe they'll just get rid of you and that's exactly what Paul did to, uh, to K yeah, over so here it was today. A very, heads, very good heads up play by Paul and I like, love to see that aggression in a new player's tournament. Absolutely. It's good stuff. Varanis, still back at HQ4, got the hacker raid down, that's nice. Patent Lab, however, has been stolen, and Paul's using that to try and grab thinking machines. He is going to go for that oh-so-standard, easiest-to-execute off-world market finisher this game. Off-world market's not all that great this game, if I'm being honest. No, 30k is the top, and that's for water, but that's because the water price is so low, so that's going to normalize pretty quickly. Otherwise, we're looking at 25k prices here. Uh, definitely a game is granted. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, Paul Paul is Paul shipping uh, quite a lot. Oh, they have teleportation. Yeah, they're shipping. Yeah, Varenis has had teleportation for a while, and that's definitely been helping us. Yeah, Paul's got a lot Paul. of shipping. Actually has some of these uh, water yeah. pumps that are not next to each other that are turned off. Uh, once again, a situation where core sample would be better to claim this one high and then try and core sample a water next to it to get that adjacency bonus than having two split mm -hmm. tiles over there. Absolutely. And Paul, I do want to point out as well, I don't feel like this is an off-world game purely because this this feels like a hacker ray game to me. Prices are very high. You kind of have some AI subsidiaries going on and that's all well and good, but they're going to have a hard time rotating their resources correctly and even if they do you make money for that anyway and so maybe you try and work your way into kims or electronics and combine that with some black market utility to keep your opponent out of those resources and just hack that on up to the victory the off-world markets are extremely expensive and you're kind of leaving yourself almost vulnerable to a majority as you get these things established yeah yeah uh, the only thing that's keeping that from happening is paul's or Stock price at sixty-two dollars. It's very high. Available to the it's very level. high. I see Varanus auto selling resources. Is that good? Question in chat. Very good question. So, the rule of thumb for auto selling. This I want to emphasize is a rule of thumb. There are plenty of exceptions, but if somebody else in the game is producing the same resource that you are, you auto sell. If nobody's producing the resource that you are. You hold. Now, exceptions yeah. would be if a player, for example, is on HQ four and they only have two of the, two, of, say, two farms, and they're actually not going to really cover their food life support costs. So then you may not auto sell because the price might be going up. That's if there's only one player in there, or maybe so you're saving up. See examples. Game one business. in this series. Yes, yeah, game one in Group you know, A is a good just... example of that. Or your launch, or the resource you're selling is the launch. Players still, even good players, still debate whether you should hold or auto sell in that case. But that's one time where you could hold and not auto sell. But in general, that is the rule of thumb. Other players are in that market, auto sell. Because otherwise, by you keeping a stockpile of that resource, you're just propping up the price for your competitors. Varanus have nanotech. Okay, Varanus has figured out. But it's not not quite soon enough, unfortunately, as that steel price has already hit $317. I really would like to see a rotation out of something here into some steel. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I think it should have actually been these farms quite some time ago, as both subsidiary pile work. There was the opportunity to kind of get out of their way and start making steel in order to support them yes. and make it so easier. This well, game actually got quite interesting because Varanus can buy two shares into Paul here, and Paul only can buy one share of themselves. This is what I've been talking about, right? Paul's making these absurd investments into off world markets that aren't going to make a lot of money, and he's never bought his own stock. And the stock price being high work both ways. Paul also needs to secure three. Varanus only needs to secure four from this point. He has a clear advantage if you look at it that way right now. He's right. very close to being able to just knock Paul out of the game. Now these uh, 40k off worlds are definitely going to help Paul here. But if Varanus had been making purchases this entire time, he would actually win the game. Yep. I'm going to assert that right now. He would because the price would have so gone he can, up. He can win it right now. Yeah. But now Paul has enough the to defend. money. Yep. He was Varanus was doing decently well. But Paul has to cancel the launches. Yep. Is this going to happen? What? Which way is it going to go? Varanus needs to Varanus. sell out. Come on, what sell out, man. You got it. On? He's got virtual reality going on. Like with this out of these building things. Paul is when this has is it. Paul just has to sell stuff too. Oh. My heart. I don't know what to say. I don't know. You got to cancel a lot of stuff. So here's another new right here, right? Either player could have won that game by canceling out of whatever their advanced building is doing, right? You need to remember where all of your resources are at any given moment, because sometimes you need to get that cash back. You need to invest it somewhere else. So if you have an optimization center running or a patent lab running and you need that cash back for a good reason, like winning the game is usually the best reason. 
Mm -hmm. then cancel out of whatever you're doing. You've got a list right at the top of where your stuff is, right? If you have a hat going on, if you have an optimization going on, if you have a patent going on, it'll all be listed at the top. You can just grab those, cancel out of them quickly, sell down, get those money back from those chemicals or get that cash back from the hacker array. And you're going to be in a great spot. Either player needed to do that in this situation in order to guarantee a victory. And uh, neither player did it. So turned out that Paul's cash flow was just a little bit better than Varanus's cash flow. And Varanus and he was able to grab that last bit. Had a hidden source of money too. Nanotech with steel at Nanotech. 300. Oh yeah, so which Varanus, would have immediately won the game. Varanus could have just literally scrapped all their buildings and they would have won. Yep. Either, either of those would have worked. And that's even more hidden, I think canceling out of your stuff, right? That's like that that top level of, this is why off-worlds can't be scrapped. You know? Right. Yeah, because the cash moves plus resources shows like what it says. All your cash and all your resources, and all your resources in use. So. But you can also see the value of structures, and for Varanus, that's $240,000 right now. Would have easily been enough to take out the game. Yep. Yeah, structure's just a little bit down there. So, uh, that that uh, also includes that off-worlds you gotta knock off, you know, $100,000 minimum from the top. Still enough. Still enough. And I didn't even remember how the structure's number is counted. Last I checked, it was some weird way that didn't didn't track with my opinions on the subject, but it was worth arguing about, because when that number is relevant in 0.01% of all games. Regardless, Paul's going to take the victory anytime he feels like it. Take the victory, a um, game that was far closer at the end than it honestly should have been, and far more entertaining. I know, that was... I was, I was, I was losing it there for a minute, because it's like... Oh, just one of you do it, and then... Time just went on, and Paul was like, I slid into it. It's gonna be all right. But Paul almost threw it. Important lessons. Yes, first of all, don't invest in off-worlds when you only have uh, two pips of your own stock. That's that's a good lesson. That's Yeah, that's that's a good step one. Second lesson. When somebody's $1 by them, when somebody's $3 by them, don't upgrade. Buy that person. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good rule of thumb. If somebody costs a dollar, maybe just maybe just spend the twenty k and buy them right now. Whatever you have to do to put that together. Yep. We also saw about checking your opponent's cash and resources before making an upgrade. That's another very There's so important many rule. That and we then, saw why financial instruments is terrible. We saw that, and then we also saw why you shouldn't ship everything halfway across the map because all of a sudden you'll find your stock at one dollar. Yeah, because you can't do, you can't afford and that. Also, you can't do it. The last thing we saw, which was, if you have enough cash plus resources to upgrade, sell the stuff and upgrade. In, unless somebody's going to kill you. Yes. Well, like, in, in Ratchet's case, he was in D plus three dead. It didn't matter. He just needed to do the upgrade. A hail mary pass is better than no, 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 no hail agree, mary I pass. I agree. Like when you've already lost the game, and the only way you could win is by taking those risks you take those risks and that's fine i just enjoy how it's like oh we're gonna throw out this rule for you new guys oh except that here we're gonna show you this other situation where we already broke the rule of this game but oh, that's, that's okay that's why off world is, <laughs> is fun right because you have all it's these you have all these rules of thumb and depending how and then you break them every game depending that's how fine. strong they are they work somewhere between you know 70 and 90 percent of the time they're good and then it's that 30 to 10% of the time that you're like, oh, this is the exception that makes the rule. 